Hi all, this is Will from Langchain. Today I'm going to be talking about reflection. If you've ever been building an agent and found that it gets caught repeating itself or isn't making strategic decisions, then this video is for you. Reflection is a common technique used to improve the quality and success rate of agents and similar AI systems. It involves prompting an LLM to critique and improve its past actions, sometimes based on additional external information such as tool observations or other observations from the environment. While it typically adds a bit of additional execution time, it can boost overall performance. So if your application permits, I would recommend you use it. If your application does not permit, you can use this technique to generate additional fine tuning data and shift the computation left to improve your performance without impacting the inference. All right, so for our first example, we'll do a super simple reflection graph here. We basically will prompt an LLM to generate an output, then we'll take that output and then prompt another LLM to role play as a teacher and provide reflections and criticisms so that the model can improve the output. It repeats it a fixed number of times and then um, returns the final result to the user. Hopefully, based on this series of improvements, it will actually generate a better artifact at the end than the original shot there. So we first will set up our connection to the LLM with these API keys and we'll set up tracing so that we can reproduce a number of these real results later. If we want to be improving the prompt, we can see exact sequence of steps that were made in Langsmith. Uh, and then without further ado, we'll define our generators. Um, the generator here, we just take a simple prompt template and then we have this LLM. In this case, it's an open source Mixtral model um, developed by Mistral. We'll create that and then we'll ask it to generate an essay about the little prints. So we can see it generates a number of paragraphs here. Um, it follows the style. It seems pretty good as at first sight. Um, I'm not going to read into it too closely because we don't have time. So then we take that output here and we can see that we have the original request and we have the um, critique, which we're going to format as a human um, message. Because again, we're asking this reflection step to be role playing as a teacher. And so it generates a new one. Um, and so then it says we have the, or it, it takes it out and then it says we're going to have a, a, an approved essay outline here. And then you can repeat. So this basic step is pretty simple. The next bit shows how to wire this up in LangGraph. So we're going to use our basic message graph, which is LangGraph primitive that stores state across nodes as a list of chat messages. We'll wrap each of our functions above in these nodes that we'll put them in as the messages key. So whenever it's called in the prompt template, it's formatted correctly. And then here we include a little bit of a translation from the AI messages to human messages and back so that the role playing model doesn't get too confused about who's saying what. The overall graph is simple. We have two nodes, generate and reflect, and we continue to loop around based on this conditional edge here. If once it's reached a certain point, it's going to end. So we create that and then we'll see how it does. So you'll see over time, it'll start to generate, reflect. This is the first pass. You can see it has an output there. Um, this one says you've demonstrated a strong understanding, but maybe you include some more quotes and citations. Um, we can see over here, it continues to chug along. and includes some improvements to different paragraphs. We're going to print it out at the end. You can see these are starting to get quite long. And then we'll generate this one out here. Um, so the last result here, we can include some references. Um, of course, this looks like it would probably hallucinate it, um, but you can see it responding to the overall criticism of the reflection step by incorporating that later. So it's trying to be doing citations and everything and appear more um, informative and etc. Before we move on to the next one, I'll note that this is extremely simple. Um, it is a single cycle, but since we're not grounding the reflection step in anything, it isn't guaranteed to actually improve performance. This often still does improve because you're teaching the, uh, the LLM to role play and you're encouraging it to uh, incrementally improve. Sometimes it commits to a specific path in the token generation uh, trajectory that isn't ideal. And so then you give it a chance to use some more compute and improve. But uh, again, overall doing this without grounding in anything um, can see some, some limited but not extremely wonderful gains. 
The next design we'll be going over is Reflexion by Shin et al. It's an architecture designed to learn through verbal feedback and self-reflection. It extends the reflection example we have below or before by incorporating both tool observations as well as more explicit prompting around how to ground or how to project the reflections. So as you can see in this graph, the user request is first fed to a responder, which generates the initial response. So it tries to answer, it tries to generate its own self-critique, and then generate some search terms that it could use to extend its answer and improve it there. All of the tools are executed and it's fed into the revision step, which then re-answers, so it does an improvement based on the critique and search and other observations there, as well as adding some citations that seeks to address the original critique based on the retrieved outputs. It repeats this a number of times, so continuing to reflect and then search for things in order to improve based on that criticism until it reaches desired state and then returns the final response to the user. As in last time, we have some initial prerequisites to set up. Um, I already installed these beforehand, but it depends on Langchain, and then we're using a search engine called Tavoli in order to treat this as a research agent. We're connecting to OpenAI this time, so we'll need that API key, and then we'll also set up Langsmith tracing just so we can reproduce and see the exact trajectory of this agent as it gets a little bit more complex than the last one. We'll start by defining the tools. Again, these tools ground the agent a lot, so we have a little bit of boilerplate here just to execute them in parallel and um, do some niceties there. Um, and then we'll get into the meat of it. So here we have the original actor prompt template. So this is again the responder and we just call it an expert researcher and we give it the instructions and then say they reflect and criticize and um, recommend search queries in order to improve your answer based on what it already knows. And again, this lets it use its parametric knowledge. So what the model has already been trained on to give an initial guess, but then we'll use external knowledge and self-reflection in order to improve that through a series of loops. Um, we're using function calling just so that it's easy to parse out. Um, we'll see that we explicitly prompt the criticism to generate both missing and superfluous aspects of its response. Again, so it has that balance in the response type. And then we also generate these um, search queries that will be passed on to the search engine afterwards. Um, these can be executed in parallel so it's not too long. Uh, and the answer we're telling it should be around a 250 word detailed answer. Um, again, you can control all of this stuff from um, the prompts itself. Um, we'll be doing some retries in case it doesn't validate well. And here is an example. So we'll see the answer. Um, it's, uh, we're asking it about reflections, so it talks about, oh, it refers to our social systems and ability to analyze and improve. So this seems pretty good. Um, it says that it's quite focused, but there is, and there is not um, superfluous information, so it's actually pretty good there. Um, it could expand on some specific techniques or algorithms, so then it's looking for techniques for this, real-world examples, impact or reflection. Maybe in the future, it will be able to find this video itself. Um, so once that comes out, we'll set up the revise one. This prompt is very, uh, very much similar. Um, the only difference being we're going to inject these revise instructions back here in the template here is the first step. Um, and these specifically will instruct it on how to use um, numeric citations for that output here. So we're going to be adding references. And this is, again, a technique both as useful so that it can be citing the search results that's being used. And then it also can help steer the LLM to generate more grounded output. Um, we'll go through that again and then get to the point where we're all waiting for looking at constructing the graph. We'll be using the message graph again which treats the state as just a list of chat messages. We'll have three nodes, the original draft, we have a tool executor node and the revised node. Every time that it hits the draft, it'll go to execute tools, and anytime the execute tools node completes, it goes to revise. The looping logic is defined here. Um, so we have the conditional edges here, and then once it reaches the max number of iterations, it'll end. So we're doing an explicit loop. So let's see a very um, easy question, how should we handle the climate crisis? Uh, and so you can see I ran this before. So it looks like the execution is completed. Um, and we can print out all of the examples here. You can see that it um, both has a number of points here and then a lot of references that try to cite each of these examples. And it's done this over a series of steps. You can look at the whole trajectory by going to Langsmith, 
So you can go in this reflection one, and you can see the series of steps. So you can see that it generates, it decides the original answer, executes the tools, um, revises, and then does that a number of times. So you can actually see the final output. And then for each of these, you could try and go in and rerun some of these outputs just to see how it perform if you want to be making any changes to the prompt template. So our final example is a little bit more complicated. It's called Language Agent Tree Search by Joel et al. It combines reflection and other reward modeling in an overall tree search process to give you the best possible trajectory at the out outcome. Um, the technique looks like the graph below. Basically, you first will generate a candidate and then you'll reflect based on the outputs of the candidate and the tool actions. The reflection assigns a score and then in this step you can also perform additional external checks. So if you're generating code, you might be running unit tests and using that to update the score. Based on that score, you then pick a node, in this case it's just the first one, to generate a number of new candidates. And then you repeat the process. So you reflect on them, possibly run some additional checks outside, use that to create a score, and that score is back propagated up to the parent node so that it reflects the overall pro how promising this particular branch is in the search. And then you repeat again. So you pick this one, in this case it's this branch, and then generate candidates from that. And then you go and reflect and update and continue to go until you've solved the problem or until you've reached a maximum tree depth. Um, so this is interesting because it uses both um, a metric from reflection and from external observations. It can help balance the search process and hopefully improve over some naive depth first search or other search algorithms. Um, and it, um, it, it's overall a pretty fun one to implement. We'll get more in detail about each component below. I apologize it's a lot of code, but um, hopefully you get the sense of how this operates based on the diagram here. Um, so again, we have some prerequisites. We'll set this up here, um, and then we'll define the graph state. So I think this is the most interesting part, to be honest. It's a, a, a node that stores the, the messages in that node that are meant to be appended to the trajectory, um, the parent and its children, and then it has some values. Um, again, basically, every time you unroll the tree, you're searching for some candidates, and then you score the candidates, and then you use this to be um, updating the, the overall branch. You might have some questions like, how do you pick the best candidate? Um, so you could do the naive way of just picking whichever one has the highest value. Um, this Monte Carlo tree search wants to be balancing that with um, the ability to explore other branches that it hasn't explored as much yet. And so it does this by using an upper confidence bound or specific upper confidence bound applied to trees, so um, UCT. And uh, it's defined right here. It basically has this um, like an average reward term and an exploration term that it combines here um, with a, a specific weighting term uh, to balance exploration and exploitation. Again, this is all a hyperparameter of the system that lets you balance um, the ability to pick the best path with the um, inevitability that sometimes it'll get caught in a local optima. So you want it to be able to search other ones and get itself out. Um, I'll skip over some of the other specifics there, but if you check out the code, you can try to re-implement re it yourself. The tree state itself, well, I need to run this first. The tree state itself then just has this tree represented by the root and then the original input. Um, now that we have the tree state, we can define the language agent, which is a little bit less complicated, us, honestly. Uh, we're just going to use ChatGPT Turbo, and we'll be using, again, a search engine here. Most of the thing that I've implemented uses function calling as well. So uh, reflection, you generate a string based on the, the reflections on whether the output is sufficient um, or superfluous and, and those types of things. We'll assign a score in this case on a scale from 0 to 10 on the quality of the output. Um, and then we'll use this to determine whether it's found a solution. Um, so we can do this. And then the next step would be generating the initial response. Um, so whenever, I mean, this is a very simple prompt, we're just saying your AI assistant, we give it a couple tools and then it can pick a path there. Uh, so an example here, if we're asking it to write a research report on lithium pollution, it'll decide to query the search engine, um, lithium pollution research report, not the most creative, I'll admit, but um, it gets the job done. Um, we wrap this in a node itself. So 
all this does is it takes the um, the generator, it executes the tools if they are there, it, gen it calls the reflection agent, and then uses that to create a new node in the tree. Uh, and this root is then um, added here since the first step and added to the graph state. Um, the next step is candidate generation. It's the same as the previous step, but unrolled a little bit more. Um, so here we're going to be using the lm.generate button um, or, or method on the Langchain LLMs just to generate n candidates. This is all configurable. And each of these candidates will be treated independently as a new node in the tree. Um, we do some deduplication later. So here's an example. We're asking it the same question. Uh, it generates five outputs. Uh, they're all pretty much the same, but with different query terms. Uh, once you do that, we will put this in this big scary looking node here, which again does the same as above, but since we're doing a bunch of candidate generations and I wanted to do it all in parallel, there's a little execute um, or a little additional code here. So we get the best candidate here um, with this get trajectory, or we get the best child method here from the root. Um, we generate, then we get the messages from it. We expand to generate five new candidates. We'll then parse these in, in, in those like tool invocations, we run all of the search queries in parallel, um, and then we'll be prompting the reflection chain to then score all those outputs, and then we'll take all those outputs, so the, the original selection of tools or a final response, and the reflection messages, and putting them in new nodes, and adding them all back into the tree as children of the best candidate. Uh, so we can run this. Finally, the moment you've been waiting for, the actual graph is quite simple here. We have two nodes, start and expand. Start in the start node, and then at each of these points, we'll check whether we should loot. Um, so we can finish if the root is solved, if, it's, if the reflection step says, hey, you've answered the question directly, uh, and we also finish if the root's height is uh, greater than five. So we want to make sure that the tree doesn't get too big. Um, and then you can try calling it. Well, we need to run this first. You can see I ran a couple of these before, and it was pretty good at these outputs. We'll see how well it does this time. So I'm printing out the steps here. You can also use some other extreme events methods to get a more incremental information. I think this is enough for me. While it's proceeding, we can actually go check out Langsmith and see I'm going to a new project here and you can see it streaming here. So you can see there's a lot of calls right now since we're doing a lot of parallel execution. We generate the initial candidate and it says we're gonna talk about, so we're asking it to generate the table of average size and weight. And so it needs these parallel processes. Again, all this is all considered a single node. And then we reflect. The reflection method outputs a score of nine, so pretty good, it says. Um, Again, if this were a code generation task or another task where you have external feedback on it, you can get a little bit more of a nuanced score here than just the self-reflection. Next, you go into this expand step. So you generate five more candidates, and then you generate all of these tool calls from all of the different candidates. Um, we do some deduplication in between, but there's probably a lot of rep repetitiveness here. And then the agent's still going. Um, so. As so you can see, it goes out, and then there's some reflection, and then it looks like it found the solution here in a number of the branches, and it's good. So I'll go back to this output. Um, so it seems that it, it is asking for additional information. We can probably um, go back up a step and, and generate a summary of the outputs there based on it. And then here, we're asking it to generate a series of moves um, based on uh, the Magnus Carlsen's chess game against Alareza Feroza. I'm sorry for butchering the name. And it's saying, dun, dun, dun. so it's looking at some of the outputs here uh, based on the research there. So these outputs weren't the best here. Um, I think that it would probably be a better example if we included some code. Uh, execution for the reflection step so the scores are more useful uh, but overall I think it's a promising technique again the overall approach is that you have some tree rollout you score each step you then pick the best node based on those scores and then you continue to update and refine this isn't super feasible if you want an immediate snappy application 
experience for your chatbot, it is good if you want to have more complicated reasoning type tasks and if it's embedded in an overall system. Um, and, and this is also a great way to generate better fine tuning data since if you're just automatically generating from a single pass, the quality won't be as good. Typically when you want to be having fine tuning data, quality uh, is way more important than quantity there. Um, so. Um, I guess with that, I'll sign off here. Thanks again for listening. This is a, another fun video. Hope that you enjoyed. Um, we talked about reflection in this video and specifically reflection as a means of improving agent performance. Um, we went over a couple of videos of examples. One was a basic reflection example. One was Reflexion, which adds additional tool observations and specific prompting into the loop there to improve the overall output. And then the final is language agent tree search, which incorporates reflection as well as another um, other out external feedback components in a tree search, which can hopefully um, get the best trajectory overall by doing a bunch of parallel operations. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to sign up for LangSmith, you can do so for free at smith.langchain.com and check out some of other videos here on YouTube. So thanks again.